How you doing there folks? Baiters here with another video for you all. Today we're gonna unlock some super unique weapons. Three revolvers and one pistol to be precise. But in order to do this, we're gonna have to make Arthur become a legendary gunslinger. So go ahead and glitter up your nipples and let's get to average baiting, baby. So the first thing we have to do as Arthur to get this mission in motion is to go to Valentine, which is one of the first towns Arthur visits as you play through the campaign. There you will see that there are two saloons. Go to the saloon just east of the gun shop. In there, Arthur will find a journalist talking to an old drunk gunfighter. When Arthur interacts with them, the journalist will tell Arthur he needs his help getting more information on Jim Boy Calloway, the barely conscious gunfighter that he's interviewing at the bar. He wants Arthur to track down four old gunslingers and ask them about Calloway and how fast he really was. Basically, he wants Arthur to find some extremely dangerous ex-outlaws, dox them, expose them, and then question them about their nefarious misdeeds in relation to Calloway. What could possibly go wrong, right? <laughs> Now the first gunslinger we visit as Arthur is Emmett Granger, who is located just up here by Flatneck Station. After meeting him, it's easy to see why he might not be fighting women off at the door. He's just got this sort of pervy pool cleaner vibe, you know? Anyways, Granger agrees to eventually exchange information for labor, so Arthur picks up some pig shit while Granger tells him that he just loves killing. He loves killing women and children and old people. He doesn't care. He just loves killing people. It's like his fucking favorite thing to do. Granger has this way of becoming immediately dislikable as soon as you meet him. But he also has like a raw confidence in the fact that he's quick on the draw, you know? So he's not really worried about telling you he's a piece of shit. Long story short, Arthur gets tired of his dubious character and antagonizes Granger into a gunfight by covering him in pig shit. To which Granger replies with, Go ahead and draw. And Arthur's like, Say when? Say when, Granger, say when? You're no Daisy. You're no Daisy at all, Granger. No, sir. He was fast, but Arthur was faster, taking him from legend to disappointment in the same breath. Now on Granger's stinky dead corpse, Arthur finds his legendary Cattleman Revolver. That's actually the first legendary gunslinger weapon we come across, and it actually looks really badass. Now, although it can't be customized in any way, it really doesn't matter, because it already looks so good, I was tempted to touch it with my pee pee. But I refrained myself after a long internal dialogue on why I shouldn't put my wiener on inanimate objects. This is definitely a really cool revolver and, and one that will make uh, an amazing addition to anyone's playthrough of the game. The next gunslinger that Arthur meets is Billy Midnight. Arthur first has to inquire about Billy at the post office in Rhodes, only to find out that Billy's always riding on trains like that mean poltergeist in Patrick Swayze's Ghost. Now when Arthur gets on the train, he finds Billy at the bar, liquored up and just covered in paranoia. As soon as Arthur starts to question him, Billy darts the fuck out of there. As you would when you get questioned by a complete stranger. Because that's not a crazy overreaction or anything. Really, th if you think about it. So Arthur chases after him because what else is he doing right now, right? I mean, fuck it. Billy actually ends up on top of the train cars running for his delusional life. You know, really sweating up his jelly beans. And he might be crazy, but he's also not very smart because... Where the fuck are you going, Billy? When Billy's finally cornered on the last train car and Arthur tries to question him yet again, Billy completely falls off the sanity train and goes right for his gun. So Arthur, out of fear for his life, and the fact that he's about to be shot by a drunk Looney Tunes character, Arthur draws first and brings his conspiracy theories to a crashing halt. Now, after killing him, Billy will drop his custom Mauser pistol, which is really cool looking but also kind of a shitty way to be a gunfighter. 
I mean, everyone else is using a single-action revolver, and this dickhole comes to the party with a semi-automatic pistol? I no longer feel bad about Arthur shooting a crazy person, because he was sort of a dick. Also, this gun is now yours, and it's absolutely amazing. So, definitely add that to your inventory. And it's also the second legendary gunslinger weapon on this list. The next gunslinger Arthur hunts down is Flaco who's basically a dangerous mustache and a really big hat. Flaco's hiding out in the mountains near Cairn Lake with what's left of his gang, and they're not really into having visitors, you feel me, fam? Once Arthur does find them, if Arthur tries to interact with them in any way, shape, or form, they'll just start shooting at him like a bunch of psychos. However, they don't expect Arthur to come in guns blazing, especially this guy. Look at him. He had no idea what the fuck was going on, eh? And he didn't even know he was in a goddamn gang until he was being shot at. Well, we caught him by surprise, didn't we? Look at it. Jesus Christ. Now, once Arthur murders all of Flaco's friends, he'll find Flaco in a shack, all alone, probably just beating his dick ferociously. Because why else would you be in a shack alone in the woods in a snowy wasteland? I'll tell you why, to beat your dick hard as shit, that's why. Anyways, after seeing Arthur just murdered all his friends, Flaco puts his dick away and isn't really in a talking mood. So he gives Arthur the look like, It's on, bud! And then he goes for his gun. So Arthur, too, goes for his gun. Long story short, Mr. Antisocial over here is gonna be late for his next mustache meeting. I just assume everyone who can grow a good mustache gets together and talks about their sweet mustaches. I mean, it only makes sense, right? I mean, I can only hope that's the case. Either way, he too drops a custom Cattleman revolver with epic engravings and a custom ivory handle, which I think is the coolest weapon in the game. This is just a fantastic gun, and it's also the third legendary weapon on this list. Another quick tip is make sure you do pick up these weapons when you do this mission because you only get one chance. That's right. If you do this mission and you forget to pick up the gun, it's gone forever. So do make sure you pick up these weapons. The next legendary gunslinger Arthur comes across is Black Bell, who is located northeast of Lagrasse at Canebrake Manor. Black Bell is probably the deadliest gunslinger on the planet. I mean, she even gets the drop on Arthur in like the first two seconds. And I reckon if she didn't trust Arthur, he wouldn't even have time to go for his pistol. Because he'd be deader than shit. She's actually totally cool though when you get to meet her. She'll tell Arthur about her nefarious past and how Calloway was more or less a slow draw with a big story. She had little respect for him in fact and she certainly didn't fear him as a gunfighter. She then proceeds to kill a bunch of bounty hunters who picked the wrong bounty to collect on, obviously. With Arthur's help of course, which she honestly didn't need. Once the smoke has settled and the bounty hunters are just a memory of what once was, she then lets Arthur take a picture of her to corroborate that he actually met her. And she rides off into the sunset like an actual badass, making all the other hard gunfighters seem way less scary. Just knowing that she's just out there lurking. However, she does not give you any custom legendary gunslinger weapons. She's the only one of the four legendary gunslingers who doesn't give you a legendary gunslinger weapon, which is kind of a bummer, because I bet her gun was pretty cool. Now, once Arthur gathers all the information and collects all the photos of the dead gunslingers and the one living gunslinger, he'll need to go back to the Baron Valentine, only to find out that Calloway and the writer have gone to a ferry boat in San Denis. When Arthur finally does catch up with them, Jim Boy Calloway is drunk as usual, and he's a little bit rowdy. He gets a little rambunctious when he finds out that Arthur killed like 75% of the deadliest gunslingers in like an afternoon. And uh, he accuses Arthur of being a nobody, pretending to be him as a somebody. So Jim Boy being the somebody that he is, wants to prove his merit and get his kill on too, you know? So he thinks about killing the journalist, who he refers to as Plato, but then Arthur gets him reminiscing about old rivals, to which he remembers that Slim Boy Grant killed his cousin a bunch of years ago. So they all agree that Jim Boy should gunfight Slim Grant. So Arthur, 
being the problem solver that he is, travels to Annisburg where he meets with the sheriff there, who gives him additional clues as to Slim Grant's whereabouts. Apparently Slim got himself into some hot water and he's in a real predicament. Eventually Arthur comes along, finally finds him just north of Annisburg. Apparently our boy Slim has been kidnapped by the very people he was trying to arrest. Well, Arthur makes short work of the henchmen who have kidnapped him, and then Arthur proceeds to kidnap him yet again to bring him to Calloway. Needless to say, Slim isn't too happy about being kidnapped yet again. Arthur with Slim tied to the back of his horse rides north to meet with Calloway and the rider. When they finally do meet up, Slim Grant doesn't appear scared of Calloway in really any way, shape, or form. Apparently, they were supposed to gunfight years ago and Calloway never showed. So naturally, Slim Grant tells Calloway he's a big no-talent pussy loser and he just walks away. Calloway, being the liquor-fueled logical thinker that he is, decides to let bygones be by- I'm just kidding. He shoots him in the back. Shoots him dead as shit as he's walking away. As you do when you're a bit emotional. Then Jim Boy starts to bitch and moan how he shouldn't have shot him in the back. Because that's just not what you do, right? And just before he starts bawling his eyes out like a six-year-old girl who just lost all her cookies, he points his anger at Arthur and challenges him to a gunfight. Seems like a rational thing to do. Now, just to be clear, Calloway was supposed to be one of the fastest guns in the West. However, he was no Landon Ricketts, not even at all. But he was kind of quick, I guess. However, he was no Daisy, no Daisy at all. Arthur actually shoots him in the face before he can even draw his gun, which is pretty embarrassing. Now, after the dust is settled, the journalist thinks up a better ending than being shot in the face by a man with no name. He does so by bending the truth, if you will taking some creative liberties. And he writes that Slim Grant killed Jim Boy Calloway by shooting him in the back. But Calloway got off a shot before dying that ended Grant's dubious character right there. And they kind of killed each other, I guess. I don't know, before he could escape. Anyways, it could be a reference to Jesse James and the coward Robert Ford. And either way, when it's all said and done, Arthur can loot Calloway's custom Schofield revolver, which is actually... Super awesome. It even has its own custom engraving that reads Canis Canum Edit, which translates from Latin to mean dog eat dog, which is most likely a nod to Rockstar's other title, Bully, which released under that exact same name in the UK. Either way, a super cool addition to anyone's arsenal. There you have it, folks. Four new legendary gunslinger weapons that all look amazing in the game. They're all 100% unique and can't be customized, but boy, are they fun to use. It can be pretty awesome wielding a weapon of this caliber in the game. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to subscribe and come back for more fun next time. And if you're lucky, at the stroke of midnight, a tiny little average baiter's fairy might come and tickle your butthole. Hope to see you all again in the next one, and remember to keep on average baiting, baby.